Hello, my name is Joey, and I wrote some thoughts for you all. Family, friends, former church pals, and maybe even some unlucky internet strangers. The purpose of this video is to explain to some of my religious family and friends why I am a secular humanist, and to try and convince those of you who are uncertain or uncomfortable with my beliefs that this is a valid and respectable position to hold. I do this for a couple of reasons. First, I have had more and more conversations recently where I, where I have been more open about my beliefs with people who I care about. I have received a variety of responses, but the majority of them have honestly left me feeling profoundly misunderstood. As my parents are Catholic and a portion of people I spend time with are religious, this is clearly not something that will just go away. So I decided that while I have the time, energy, and vocabulary, I should make the effort to articulate my views and explain why I hold them. Second, there are many young people who are leaving their parents' religion and having difficulty being fully understood. The natural inclination on both sides of this divide is to avoid conversation. I have tried that before, uh, and the result is often feeling disconnected uh, from people you should feel close to. So another purpose of this is to hopefully make it easier for parents, children, friends, religious and atheists to bridge that divide. I may be the first atheist or secular humanist to explain our beliefs to you, but I hopefully won't be the last. Polling shows that there is strong stigma against atheism in America. There is an assumption that atheists don't have moral compass without religion. There is confusion over what we mean when we say we don't believe in God or an afterlife. So I want to do my little part of decreasing that stigma and convincing people that it's okay to not believe in God. Let me be clear. I do not want to convince you that God does not exist or that you should stop being religious. Your personal beliefs are all your own, and I am well past the stage where I want to be deconverting people willy-nilly. Anyways, let's get into it. I will begin by explaining what secular humanism is, and then addressing some common questions I get. What is secular humanism? Kurt Vonnegut said, I am a humanist, which means, in part, that I have tried to behave decently without expectations of reward or punishment after I am dead. I believe that this life is the only life that we have. That when we die, just as before we were born, our consciousness ceases to exist. I believe that we are only our physical bodies. Our emotions, anger, love, depression, excitement, are all results of biological functions. Functions, may I add, that feel just as real to me as they do to any other human. Even though they may ultimately just be complex chemical reactions. I believe that we have evolved to care about each other. That we as humans have been evolutionary select, evolutionarily selected to thrive in group settings, and that acting with the group, humanity's, best interest in mind is the most appealing way to live. Given this one short life, where we don't know when we're going to die, and we don't know when the ones we love are going to die, I believe that the logical approach to life is to pursue contentment and goodness. To pursue quality, loving relationships. I view all life as extremely valuable. This is our one short chance in the entire history of the universe to be alive. Therefore, we should be pursuing happiness for ourselves and others, and maximizing the quality and length of all people's short time here. I believe that making others, other people's lives better with my actions is crucial to making myself happier. Now, there are many possible labels to the views that I hold. Atheist, I don't believe in God. Naturalist, I believe that science and naturalistic explanations are all that are necessary to understand the mysteries of the universe. Nihilist, I believe that there is no inherent purpose or meaning to life. Humanist, I believe that humans have the potential to do good in the world using rationality. And secularist, I do not ascribe to the teachings of any religion. Besides maybe Buddhism, but that's more of a philosophy. I know that that's a lot of terms and that some of them are stigmatized, but I want to explain why they should not scare you. I mean, I'm clearly not living a life of murder and chaos. I want to convince you that I have thought through them enough to be confident with these specific terms as the best descriptors for my belief, my beliefs. A common response to these self-ascribed titles, specifically the atheist one, is, why are you not an agnostic? You can't disprove the existence of God any easier than a believer can prove it. Isn't it, more, isn't it uh, a more scientific approach to say that you do not know? There is some truth in this perspective. 
I would agree that I certainly cannot disprove the existence of God, nor do I desire to, nor do I think that that will ever be a possibility. So technically, I'm agnostic towards whether or not God exists, because we are humans, uh, because we as humans can never know. But I think that over the course of me being out as an atheist, the term agnostic has been used to comfort the person I'm talking to, as if there's still some uncertainty in my head about whether or not I believe in God. To be as specific as possible with my language, I could say that I am a practical atheist because I do not believe that there is any God and I live my life as though there is no God or afterlife. I think about this in term, or think about this in terms of a political view. You may have met someone who is a capitalist or a socialist. This doesn't mean that they necessarily have full unwavering belief in that system, though of course we've met some that do, but rather that that system is the best one to them, even if if it does have some shortcomings uh, or may not paint the fullest picture of their beliefs. Agnosticism is a perfectly reasonable philosophical position, but it neither describes my approach to the world, nor does it accurately convey what I believe in the modern connotation of the word. I know many religious people want to have that, uh, want to believe that atheists are still on the fence about the existence of God, but I truly am not. As an engineering degree holder, I can say that in the face of evidence, I may change my view, but until then, I will remain an atheist. I apologize that this is a bit of a semantics rabbit hole, but it has come up often enough that uh, I think it necessitated a response. Now for the term nihilism. Given that I am trying to convince you that I am not devoid of moral reasoning, referring to myself as a nihilist is not the easiest way of doing that. But whatever, let's do it anyways. <clears throat> My friends who study philosophy would have me clarify that I am an existential nihilist, meaning that I do not believe that life has inherent purpose or value. This is a sharp contrast with Judeo-Christian perspective that life and existence have, uh, of life and existence having meaning. But as far as I can tell, there is no meaning in this world other than what we ascribe meaning to. And that meaning comes because we ascribe it, not because it is inherently there. there. Now let's get to some common questions uh, about my beliefs. So, if life has no meaning, if there's no eternal reward or punishment for actions here on earth, why not lie, steal, and murder all day long? I literally have been asked by a Catholic priest after explaining my lack of belief in God to him, why not rob a bank? Here's an interesting thought experiment to show what I mean. If for some reason you lost your faith, is your reaction to rob a bank if you imagine a world where God doesn't exist, does this, does this make the thought of robbing a bank more appealing? The implication here would be that the belief in God is what is preventing you from robbing a bank. Now, if that's the case, I really don't want to deconvert you and maybe you should just stop watching the video right now. But I suspect that that's not really the case. I think that the majority of people, especially well-educated adults, free from financial struggles, do not have the urge to rob a bank because we think it is wrong. It feels like a wrong thing to do. We can empathize with the hypothetical, terrified bank teller. We can conceptualize what type of world this would be if everybody robbed banks. We imagine feeling guilt or shame for unfairly acquiring this stolen money. As I said before, we have evolved to function well in groups. Most people care deeply about what others think of them. Most people do not want to cause unnecessary harm to others. Some people might argue that that right there, that built-in care, for our fellow human is God in action. Obviously, I would respectfully disagree with that. With any naturalistic explanation for the world or a positive uh, aspect of humanity, you could come in and say, but God made it that way. Therefore, God exists, or, or that's proof of the goodness of God. I do not find this convincing, as it seems to just tack God on to an already fully functioning explanation. Uh, but if this is your perspective, Again, I'm not here to deconvert anyone. I'm here to explain why secular humanism is a reasonable and valid position to hold. Um, I think a much more convincing perspective on doing good and doing bad is this. Given our short opportunity to be alive, we should treat each other well. Treating each other well will make us happier. We have all experienced this. It feels good to do something nice for someone else. It feels good to lend an ear or a piece of advice to a friend in need. It feels good to help your friend move. It feels good to be helped by someone else. We understand this so viscerally, yet I have 
frequently been asked, why not be a bad person? I'm not saying it's always easy to do the right thing, but I think it's possible and rational to act with good intentions without the expectation of reward or the fear of punishment. Another question I get is whether or not I fear hell. The answer is no. I do not believe that my atheism is a one-way ticket to hell, which is a bit of a strange sentence in itself because I don't believe in hell, but regardless. I do not think that God sends otherwise wonderful people to hell simply for not believing in him. Uh, or Sorry, I do not think that a God that sends otherwise wonderful people to hell for simply not believing in him is a God worth worshiping. Luckily, this is a pretty non-controversial position to take nowadays, especially since it's gotten support from people like Pope Francis. But this is still something that naturally would bother the religious people who care about me who want to do everything possible to ensure that I get to spend eternity in the land of milk and honey, or I guess uh, soy milk and agave nectar if it was really paradise. Uh, but I digress. <laughs> this may be one of those unshakable fears developed after years of internalizing fear of hell. I think of it this way. The most convincing version of a deity worth loving is one who is him or herself all loving, slow to anger, and rich in kindness. If this God was not that, if God put otherwise loving and compassionate people through either eternal torture or simply just separation from their loved ones, simply for not believing in him, I am not convinced that this is a God, uh, or is the action of a loving and kind God. So I present the potentially false dichotomy that God is either all loving and allows good atheists into heaven, or God does not allow good atheists into heaven, and thus is not all loving. Given the fact that I feel like my extreme skepticism is just a part of who I am, the idea, the idea that my parents being punished for the, uh, by the absence of their favorite child for all of eternity, for all of eternity is cruel. <laughs> As I view with absurdity the thought of worshiping a cruel and evil dictator for the fear of angering him, as they do in North Korea, I view it absurd to worship the cruel, uh, to worship a cruel and unjust God. But that's not really the point, as again, I'm not trying to deconvert anybody in this video. What I'm getting at is that I don't think the people watching this video really see my beliefs or my lifestyle as one that would lead me into hell, if you even believe hell exists at all. Again, I'm trying to convince you that my views are reasonable and valid, even within the context of your own separate religious beliefs. Another worry about not having religion that has been brought up is the lack of community who cares about me and shares my values. The worry is that the number of secular humanist communities is so small, it will be difficult for me to find one. And if I do, uh, it may not be a good fit for me. This is a valid concern, uh, especially given the lack of secular communities in the majority of America. Um, but I am not worried about this, for me specifically. In college, I was a member of the humanist group there called the Secular Student Fellowship, and I learned how to recruit members, organize meetings, plan events, and cultivate meaningful uh, conversations. We have had a variety of humanist chaplains over the years, and the group continues to have strong support from the Office of Religious Life. Now, I know uh, I'm graduated now, and that false environment of college where everyone's always eager to make friends is over. So whatever will I do? A couple of friends and I have actually started a humanist group for the early 20s to mid 30s humanists in Los Angeles. We are tentatively calling this group Curiosity Collective. These friends and I uh, have a lot of experience planning meetings uh, in the humanist world and we're dedicated to making our little corner of LA a less lonely place. We have been holding three or four meetings a month to discuss topics of interest, ranging, ranging anywhere from science to politics to social issues. I can get into the details of what a humanist, humanist community entails, <clears throat> but the important part is that they are, amazing, they, they are amazing groups of curious, kind people who are dedicated to loving each other, being better people, and making the world a better place. My experience in the Secular hum Student Fellowship uh, in college was transformative, and I have no reason to believe that, experience, that that experience cannot continue into adulthood. Luckily, I have the willingness and time to create this community. So for now, the worry that I won't find a community of people who really care about each other can be put on hold until this project fails. And even if it does, we'll keep trying until we get it right. 
But the idea that a small to medium sized community is not just for us. We want to normalize young adult humanist communities. We think that there is something special about a group of people living intentional lives, willing to care about each other and have difficult and meaningful conversations. In this sprawling, segmented world where more and more adults are lonely, where young people in LA say they don't know how to meet new people, the normalization of a community that injects meaning and strong relationships into the lives is how we combat modern problems of isolation. But why is there an isolation problem in the first place? If these people just joined a church, they would feel much better and more connected. But here's the thing. These young people are leaving religion. They are leaving religion in higher numbers than ever before, and they are not returning. A recent Pew poll found that 26% of Americans identified as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular. This was only 17% back in 2009. Obviously, this is not to rub in the fact that my group is on the rise and yours isn't, because that honestly doesn't matter. Well, maybe we can get into that another time. But it's to draw attention to the reality of the current landscape of belief. Non-believers, or nuns, are growing, and I would rather there be an articulated moral approach to the world, as well as a model for secular communities, than to have these people left with a religion-shaped hole in their brains and nothing to fill it. I have actually come a long way since leaving religion. I think there are aspects of religious organization that is uh, that are extremely meaningful and worthwhile, so much so that I want to steal them and use certain aspects of what religions have perfected to make atheists as happy and feel, as uh, and feel belonging as these met methods make religious people happy and feel belonging. If there is curiosity on what these methods are, I'd be happy to talk about them in another video. But after all I've said about my experience with these communities, there's still skepticism towards whether or not uh, these people can help me in times of need like my church would, or like a church would. The answer is yes. The reason I'm so passionate about this type of community is precisely because I've had this experience of care and support. I was a freshman in college when my best friend from home died in a car accident, and I did not find solace in religion or church or the belief in an afterlife. I was supported by the people in the Secular Student Fellowship. I talked for hours with the humanist chaplain about how to understand the death of someone so great in the morning of his life. I was given the language and the guidance and the understanding by an older chaplain with more life experience who shared my worldview. He helped me understand that there is no reason that my best friend died. Life is crazy, chaos happens, there is no why. I can only be thankful for what we have now and recognize the urgency to live a good life and to actively love the people you love because we are going to die. Everyone we love is going to die. Everyone. Um, even everyone we hate is going to die one day and enter the meaningless void of nothingness from which we all came. But we are here now, so let's make the best of it. This perspective gives me optimism, gives me meaning, and makes me excited to live and learn. It excites me like nothing else in the world because, to me, it feels so deeply true, like the feeling of someone perfectly explaining an emotion you felt but have never been able to put into words. With that, I bring this video to a close. Um, if there's any interest, uh, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, I really enjoy making stuff like this, uh, getting a chance to articulate uh, what I believe. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or even uh, email me a video of yourself as a response. I would be happy to discuss topics like evil, morality, veganism, effective altruism, what secular humanist communities look like, books that have influenced, influenced my thinking, or whatever else you might have questions about uh, why I believe what I believe. But until then, Bernie 2020. Thanks for watching.